Growing up, I was always so in love with flowers. And that probably stemmed from the fact that my father and his family work in that industry. For years, I have been surrounded by them and the joy that they bring. So, when I came across this phrase a little while ago, I felt that it not only fit perfectly into my speech, but also into my life. The phrase is, with no rain comes no flowers. On the surface, this may not seem like much, but if you think about it a little deeper, I think it carries an important message. In a literal sense, without rain, we would not be graced with the beauty and the benefits that flowers bring in the world. However, in a figurative sense, the phrase means that in order to make way for the good, you must endure the bad. But the part that got me thinking was why we always automatically jump to the conclusion that the tough parts of our lives are the bad parts. I think as a society, we've built up this divider in our lives between the good and the bad. And we only really give the good the appreciation that it deserves. When in reality, we should be grateful for all of the struggles and all of the successes that led us there. My name is Jackie, and I'm so honored to be here today delivering this speech to you all. When I first started writing, I tried to think about what big experiences I've had in my life or the moments that were unforgettable to me. So naturally, I started reflecting on the last 17 years, what I've done, where I've been, and where I am today. In a snapshot, I'm a girl who grew up in Oakville. I came to Appleby in grade seven, and in just a few weeks, I'll be deciding where I wanna spend the next four years of my life. I have made amazing friends who have all impacted me in unique ways, and I'm surrounded by an amazing family. Although this might seem ordinary to you, these are all small aspects that have made my life so memorable. They're just some of the aspects that I'm grateful for. But what does being grateful mean? Well, to me, it's a thankfulness for what is valuable and meaningful to oneself. But there are so many more ways to define it. In fact, Scientists discovered that gratitude is actually deep-rooted into our brains. It's braided into our DNA, and it serves as a biological purpose to humans. There's even the idea that the experience of gratitude is a historical focus of many world religions. Something that we have an instinctive understanding of has actually proven to be so much more complex, unique, and attention-worthy than you might have thought. When we feel grateful for something, we're acknowledging the elements of our lives that make it worth living. And in turn, we feel a boost of happiness in our mindset, something I know I could use once in a while. When I started high school, I told myself that I was gonna work as academically hard as I could so that when the time came, I could open myself to, up to as many post-high school opportunities as possible. At the time, I believed that high school's success was determined solely on thriving academically. Unfortunately, this came with putting immense amounts of pressure on myself and receiving pressures from, pressure from others to keep being successful. As the years passed, I started to get really scared of disappointing myself and those around me. So I focused all of my energy and all of my gratitude on living up to that standard. I only showed gratitude when I had an academic achievement, but rarely showed gratitude for my efforts during those long nights of working. But after all, those were the nights that led me to my success. Many parts of the last four years were a blur to me for this reason. I don't regret where I've gotten because I'm so incredibly proud of myself and the strength that I've shown throughout the years. But I do regret not taking the time to appreciate the other components in my life. In those difficult times, I genuinely believe that showing gratitude for even the smallest things would have positively boosted my mental well-being. That is something that I plan on focusing on for the remainder of the year and on to university. For those of you who know me well, you know that during those difficult times, where my mood is a little bit low, I turn to my comfort movie, Cinderella. I know, it might seem childish, but it's just one of those movies that stuck with me throughout the years. And when I watched it first when I was a kid, I think I loved it because it was about a girl who fell, or who fell in love with a prince and became a princess, which was practically my biggest dream. However, as I grew up, I realized that the reason I kept watching it changed. I watch the movie now because I admire Cinderella for her character and the strength that she possesses despite all the hardship she faces. I believe that she does an amazing job of teaching the lesson of gratitude. In case you don't know the story, Cinderella was born into a loving family of two parents and although they didn't have much, they lived a happy life. Unfortunately, 
Both of her parents passed away, and she was left with an evil stepmother and two stepsisters. She was objectified and treated as nothing more than a maid, yet she never allowed those awful things to ruin her pure heart. Instead of focusing on what she lacked, Cinderella was grateful for what she did have, such as the memory of her loving parents and a roof over her head. She dreamed big, but she was always satisfied with what she had. Her attitude of gratitude and her ability to make the best out of every scenario is something that I look up to. So, even though I'm almost an 18-year-old, I still watch this movie from my childhood to remind me to be grateful for even the tiniest things in my life and to try and see every single part as something good. Over the years, I have been so lucky to travel to so many countries around the world and experience endless culture, something that's widened my perspective and molded me into the individual that I am today. That being said, I feel like I took it all for granted until the pandemic hit in 2020. One of the few positive things that the pandemic has given me over the past two years is the reminder to be grateful for what I have and the things that I've done, because it can all change in an instant. For example, I usually go to Germany during Christmas to visit my family, but because of COVID, I still haven't been able to. Having that taken away made me realize that I took for granted the times that I was able to go because they seemed like such routine trips that would never stop. Now, I miss sitting around the Christmas tree with my family and my cousins and enjoying it on Christmas Eve. I miss hearing the stories that my dad and his siblings would tell of their childhood and the big feasts that we would all have together. I also took for granted how much joy traveling itself brought me. Some of the best memories of my life are from trips that I took with my family over the years, and I am so grateful that I was given that opportunity. I only wish that I had realized how grateful I should have been in the moment instead of realizing it after because I didn't have it anymore. As S2s, we are all about to embark on new journeys outside of Appleby, and I plan to use that opportunity as a sort of reset button. That's not to say that I wanna forget any of the experiences that I've had here these past years, because I have made amazing friends and have created timeless friendships. But I want to use this fresh start to change my attitude toward gratitude, and I challenge you to do the same. Firstly, as our new journey commences, take the opportunity to start on a clean slate. From now on, whenever you feel yourself seeing the negative side of things, take a minute to think about all the things that you do have in your life that you can be grateful for. I think you'll find the impact to your mindset quite shocking. They say that there are people who have everything yet feel like they have nothing, and that there are people with almost nothing who feel like they have everything. The only difference between these groups is that one expresses appreciation for what they have and the other does not. The group that expresses gratitude radiates happiness because they don't focus their time on wishing for more. They focus on the goodness that they already have. Secondly, I challenge you to take all the opportunities that arise in front of you and don't take any of them for granted. As S2s, we're getting ready to head off to university. So while you're there, join a new club, try a new sport, because who knows, it could be something that ends up being unforgettable to you. Lastly, I challenge you to say thank you more often. Whether that be to yourself or to the people around you, expressing gratitude out loud is so powerful. It is heartwarming to know that you or something that you did is appreciated by someone else. So say thank you, because it won't only benefit you, but it could also very well brighten up someone else's day. And although I'm asking these small things of you, I'm also largely posing these challenges to myself. I know that there are countless things in my life that I should continue to be grateful for every day. So, as I end my speech, just don't forget to also be grateful for the moments of darkness in your life. Because as I said at the beginning, with no rain comes no flowers. Now please rise and sing hymn 656, She Comes Sailing on the Winds.